Hey everyone, uh, Harrison Cole from Penn State. Uh, I'll be talking about making uh, accessible flood maps. I didn't realize how much topical overlap Crystal and I had, uh, and I was only able to see her uh, Q&A, so I, I hope I don't contradict anything uh, she says here, but I, I think it'll be, our presentations will be more of an um, elaboration on each other's than anything. Um, I also have an accessible version of the slide deck available on my website, uh, which is harrisoncardo.com slash publications. Uh, and I'll have a, um, a transcript of what I'm saying up there as well after I give the talk, because it's not scripted. So um, I will write down what I say. So uh, I'm looking at a pretty specific uh, scenario for creating accessible maps, um, which are uh, making firms accessible. So FEMA distributes these maps called firms, which are flood insurance rate maps. Um, they most of the time help people understand what sort of flood insurance they need to buy. Um, it shows portions of cities around the US and um, uh, shows which what parts of the cities are, are covered by flood zones. Um, that's their, their most common use. Um, but if communities want to create a plan to um, manage and respond to natural disasters, then they'll probably use these maps, especially in the case of like hurricanes or floods, to figure out uh, the details of these plans. Um, so what they can do is um, when communities create these plans to respond to national disasters, they use the firms and then they uh, put together the plan, send it off to FEMA, FEMA gives them grant money in order to actually implement these plans. Um, the highest level people actually working on these on these plans are um, like hydrologists and GIS people, um, and they're the sort of like expert types. But a required uh, portion of this process is that the plan has to be it has to go through this public input process, um, and the people that are going to be involved in that are maybe not likely to, but uh, there is a possibility that they could be blind or visually impaired or represent people who are. Um, but in any case, they do need to be accessible to people who might not be able to see um, visual maps uh, or else they, like, you can't really be involved in the process at all. Um, so this is kind of difficult. Um, there's no sort of official accessible format for these maps. The standard approach at the moment is to provide a description of the maps, either alt text or um, uh, a, a separate written description on a document somewhere. But of course, uh, that can be kind of difficult and problematic. Uh, this is an example of a firm. These are pretty big maps, full size. They're about 36 inches wide. Um, we have a legend with a couple of dozen entries on it. There's satellite imagery. Um, there's this extensive note section, which you know that's just text. But um, there's a whole lot going on uh, in in these images. There is something called a firmet, which is a uh, smaller. It's a it's a portion of a full size firm, and these are made to be printed out just like on eight and a half by eleven printer paper. But you can still see there's there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the map, lots of labels, lots of different types of flood zones. Um, and uh, so describing all of this adequately in a way where, where people can give informed input on a community disaster plan um, can be kind of difficult. This is actually um, the uh, suggestion that PowerPoint gave me for these maps when I was putting together the presentation. Um, they suggested map. For, for the images, which is not wrong, um, but also not helpful. So what can we do? Um, probably the most common uh, or the, the most frequent options for creating accessible versions of maps these days, uh, 3D printing comes up a lot. Uh, I know Crystal talked about that a little bit. Um, this can be used to represent uh, volumetric data and elevation, things like that. Um, but it's kind of hard to learn. The printer's still expensive. Uh, you have to sand off like ragged edges and stuff. It can be um, sort of difficult to, to effectively implement. Um, and if you're looking at 
a anything involving you know a, a bureaucratic process especially if it goes between a local and federal government you want to make this as simple as possible so uh for my own research i was thinking like okay maybe we can we can find something a little simpler digital maps are another option that's commonly used they're scalable they can be interactive uh involve other types of of inputs like audio and vibrational cues um but you have to have some sort of platform to display them so if somebody uh belongs to a city that can't afford to distribute lots of portable like mobile computing devices uh then that's going to be a non-starter for them so micro capsule paper uh is is pretty common it's pretty cheap it's paper with chemicals uh, inside of it. It expands and then creates this 3D textured surface. Um, it's not as 3D as something that's 3D printed, but it's it's definitely textured. It's sort of, uh, it, it feels like um, uh, signs with braille on them that you see in like elevators and stuff like that. So that's probably going to be um, most people's choice, the, the one that, uh, they will be most familiar with um, if, if they've used accessible graphics before. Um, this is a test draft, early draft map uh, that I made. And uh, this is not a good example of one. There's a lot going on. Um, the textures need to be very discriminable. They are not in this case. Uh, this would be really hard to read. But hopefully, uh, you can see that the detail of the, the texture on the map. So what do these maps need to do? Well, a lot of accessible mapping research is about wayfinding or orientation mobility. That's sort of the official designation. Um, I'm more interested in how they can facilitate analysis. So um, if somebody who can't use uh, visual maps wants to do some sort of light spatial analysis of their, uh, of their community, how can how can tactile maps help facilitate that? Um, they should also be able to be usable um, within a broad swath of the visually impaired population. I think only about 10% of uh, people with visual impairments can read Braille. A lot of that is because people tend to lose vision um, later on in their life, and so they didn't have an opportunity to learn Braille. Um, but there's also like different types of Braille, and it's it can be complicated. Um, and then also, because this is a community-based process, it should facilitate collaboration uh, with sighted users so that th this isn't a uh, like a, a segregated process where you have the blind people and then the sighted people doing their own things with, with maps. It should be um, it, a, a collaborative process. So there are three primary um, things that need to be mapped in these maps. Flood zones, obviously, it's kind of important for a flood map. Um, roads, even though they might not include sidewalks, uh, are generally accepted as, as a sort of general reference system. Um, so that's, that's important. Also happens to be easy to map. Um, and then buildings, especially uh, schools and hospitals and things like that, are really important for uh, uh, trying to actually put together a plan. Oops. Um, so let's see. I think we talked about legibility a little bit. Why is this moving? OK. I'll show you some draft maps. Um, this is one of the first ones that I made with uh, uh, TMAP, which is a experimental piece of software, I guess, um, that uses OpenStreetMap to create uh, tactile maps that you can print out uh, onto macro, uh, uh, micro capsule paper um, and then make them 3D yourself. This obviously only shows roads. We have labels around the perimeter that are abbreviations of the roads. Um, it doesn't show buildings. It doesn't show the flood zones. But um, already you can see this is there's a whole lot going on um, that you would have to be able to discriminate between if you're using this uh, uh, as, as someone with visual impairments. Um, this is the map that it is representing. This is what it was uh, translating, so to speak. Um, so there's, there's a lot that still needs to be considered. Um, so what I've done is actually, I don't know why it's doing that, whatever. Um, 
taken a this is a quarter of the firmat. So the firmat is also already a portion of a full size firm. This is a portion of a firmat. Um, this is probably our best bet for putting together something where you can discriminate between individual symbols. Um, different weights of lines and different colors will produce slightly different textures um, on a microcapsule paper. Uh, the flood zone has been uh, generalized and, and aggregated into just a single thing. Um, and uh, the, the edges have been simplified a little bit in order to um, make sure that there's there are clean lines uh, at every point on the paper. So up next, need to figure out what uh, have to what degree things can be generalized without sacrificing um, their ability to be useful in spatial analysis. Um, they need to be generalized somewhat. Obviously, as cartographers, we're always making these decisions, um, but finding that line is going to be important. Um, exactly what the collaboration process will look like, especially if it's happening over Zoom, uh, which I guess is a thing we have to consider now. Um, making sure that these maps are distributable, uh, it's, it's possible to download them and then print them out on a microcapsule printer, but uh, mailing them might also be a possibility. It's something to consider. Um, and then what other sorts of processes can be uh, can this benefit from uh, what other types of analysis? So uh, I'll end there because I think I'm done. Sorry about my slides jumping around. I'm not sure why that was happening, but thanks uh, for for listening. And that's my contact info. You know, they're not necessarily easy to read. I know it sounds bad at a cartography conference to say, but <laughs> yeah, no. So what you're doing is incredible. And let's just go ahead and jump right into the questions because we do have some in the chat. Um, Lauren Winkler's asking, um, first of all, how did you choose symbols for the different types of flood zones? And is it more accessible to show one symbol for flood zones? That seems to be um, the, the consensus of um, accessible mapping professionals that I've spoken to about this. Um, the actual symbols that you would use for the flood zone, um, it's aerial symbols are, are tricky because you have to be able to uh, represent something that has a very clear endpoint, um, but also in the case of a flood zone, the, the fact that it's a problem, um, or rather the fact that it overlaps other features is why it's a problem. Um, you know, this is, <laughs> it's, you're using this map because a flood is uh, overlapping other stuff. So um, being able to represent those features that are gonna be damaged or covered somehow by flooding um, and also have those symbols be discriminable versus the uh, whatever fill symbol you use uh, or the fill pattern used for the flood zone is um, it's, it's sort of an open question, but right now I'm just using a light gray so that it's um, um, it doesn't just feel like flat paper, but it also doesn't feel like a solid built object. I see. And I think we have time for one more question. Um, Jesse yeah. Braden is asking, are people who are totally blind better map readers or more easily able to process spatial information because of the way that they navigate the world? Let's see. I've read some research about this um, and I can't remember the consensus off the top of my head, but I seem to remember that um, the way that uh, people with visual impairments process spatial information is similar or identical to people um, who uh, are, are sighted. Um, so the the issue of thinking spatially and using maps is kind of different as well because some people might have had access to tactile graphs uh, graphics and, and maps for a long time and that obviously that can help um the sort of uh sense of literacy um but uh in terms of wayfinding it like it takes some practice 
but I don't believe that there's any sort of um, uh, like fundamental categorical difference. Okay, yeah, well, that is right on the money. We are just out of time. Uh, well, awesome, awesome presentation, Harrison. Thank you so much. Yeah.